This is CERN, the world's most advanced research laboratory. Scientists here try to crack some of the most complex codes humanity has ever attempted. But one of the most important things they've had to figure out is how to store all the data that they collect. It's actually a really complicated task, and the solution isn't what you'd expect. It's tape. Tape. Basically the same tape that filled our homes in the 80s and 90s in the form of cassettes and VHS. It turns out tape is having a comeback, and it might be the solution to keeping the most important data on Earth safe. I'm Kaylee Hope, this is Quartz. Please subscribe to our channel. The main reason CERN is one of the world's most respected centers for scientific research is because of this, the Large Hadron Collider. It's the biggest and most complex machine ever built. Researchers here are studying what happens when protons collide to better understand the nature of the universe. It is designed to make as many measurements as possible of the proton-proton collision. Patty McBride is a scientist at CERN. She works on one of the experiments within the Large Hadron Collider project. When a collision happens, we collect about a gigabyte per second. One gigabyte of information per second. They collect about 20 million gigabytes each year. It's a mind-blowingly large amount of data that needs to be archived somewhere. I know there were many times when people thought about, well, we should just get rid of tapes, it's old-fashioned, that we can do this all with disk. But in fact, tape has become a reliable and economic way of storing all the data. CERN has decided to store all this information on tapes because they're a cheaper and safer alternative to the hard disks that we all use to store stuff. Here in the library, we have more than 30,000 tapes. And each tape cartridges can store up to 10 terabytes basically 300 petabytes of data. Storing things on tape means it's offline and protected against hackers, cyber attacks, or technological failures. So tape libraries like these are springing up all around the world. Research institutions, governments, and especially tech companies like Google, Microsoft, and Amazon are all using them. This means that a lot of your data is also stored on tape. Several years ago, Google had an incident where they unintentionally lost contents of, of Gmail. That data was all backed up on tape, and so they were able to go back to their archive, pull the data off the tapes, and restore everything. That's Mark Lance. He's the manager for Advanced Tape Technologies at IBM's research lab in Zurich. He's seen the surge of interest in tapes. In fact, he's partly responsible for it. In 2017, he broke a record in magnetic tape storage. So today, we have 20 terabytes in a cartridge like this, but our demonstration has shown that we can, with the technologies we have here today, achieve capacities of 330 terabytes in the same form factor. The average laptop has a capacity of about one terabyte, so that's like 330 laptops in the palm of your hand. This is really important. Hard drives have been getting smaller and smaller, but we're starting to reach a limit as far as how much we can cram into a single disk. Lance says that tape has a long way to go before we hit that wall. Within one of these cartridges, we actually have a very large length of tape. So we can achieve these very high cartridge capacities. In order to understand how impressive that is, it helps to look at how far tape has come. In 1951, digital magnetic tape was first used in computers. These were big, heavy, reel-to-reel -reel tapes. They had to be mounted by hand and could only store about one megabyte of data. In the 1970s, tapes started getting smaller. They could store about one gigabyte, and people started using them in their home computers. Eventually, this led to LTO, Linear Tape Open, which came out in the year 2000. It's the type of palm-sized cartridge that Mark is talking about. Now we have thousands of these cartridges in robotic tape libraries across the world. What Lance is working on in the lab right now will be the next leap forward in digital tape storage. Today, I'm not aware of anything that could potentially compete with tape, at least in the next couple of decades. Despite the advancements and growing interest in tape, there aren't a lot of places actually making it. In fact, there's only two, Fujifilm and Sony. And since 2017, they've been in a grueling patent war that has halted the production of the latest tape cartridges. 
Both companies declined to comment for this story. My team works very closely actually with both Fujifilm and Sony and our goal is to try to have as many media suppliers uh, in the market as possible. We would like a kind of uh, healthy ecosystem for, for tape. The future of tape manufacturing is uncertain, but the future of tape itself looks bright. As the world moves more and more online, we create more and more data. Preserving it has become critical. All the data that we were storing in the year 2000 now would fit into the drawer of my office. So the question is how long it will take for all the data that we have now to fit again in the drawer of my office and it's really not very, very far. Hey, we're making a series for Quartz members we think you'll like. It's called Because China. China is reshaping our world in a lot of interesting and unexpected ways. Click the link in the description or the comments and sign up for a free membership trial to watch this series and more great videos.